This is the official Leeds United podcast. Well, without further ado, Matt, let's welcome the recent addition of Daniel Farker's backroom staff, first team goalkeeping coach, Ed Wooten, to the pod. Welcome, mate. Hello, how are you? How's your French? Uh, poor. <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> I won't lie. Um, fortunately, fortunately, Ilan's English is better than my French, so yeah, uh, yeah. he puts me to shame in that front. There's, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> You're new at the club, obviously. Um, yeah. My, my favourite thing pre-season was seeing the lads that were coming in, who, who the new players were, were signing mm. at the clubs. And I used to dread when you'd sign for new club because all I knew was the initiation of the song would be oh, coming or yeah. what, what do the club have yeah. to do? So yeah. from a player's side of point of view, we've heard a few of the lads and um, what Carl Dollar was talking about um, when he arrived. Did, did the staff do the same thing, mate? Did you have to do an initiation with no, the players or with the staff or have you got away with no, it? No, we managed to get away with that one this time around. So <laughs> I've just been ducking and diving and hope nobody brings <laughs> it up. So, yeah. yeah, I appreciate you bringing that up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tag Liam Cooper in on this podcast, yeah, right? Yeah. So the skipper can get you up to do your song. If you yeah. did have to do a song, what you go to, mate? What you do? Uh, do you know what? I, I, I like me Oasis and songs like that. So um, I, I actually had inst- I had planned to uh, do only fools and horses. I thought that might be a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that so, would be uh, excellent. Listening on together. How are you settling in in the club and, and and in Leeds in general? Brilliant, amazing. Really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, I'd been at Norwich a long time, um, so I hadn't moved that far up from Essex into Norwich. Sort of. The move wasn't a particularly big one at that stage of my life, um, but um, recently, obviously, coming four hours up the road it, it is a bit of a bigger, bigger transition. But the club's just brilliant. Um, really uh, impressive people around. Um, everyone's been very welcoming. Um, Leeds itself, fantastic city. Um, being into the shops, yeah, been into the shops with the missus and all what have you. So uh, yeah, that's already up and running and um, getting getting used to the to the shopping malls, etc. But, you know, to go out into the local countryside and the Yorkshire yeah. Dales is phenomenal. Um, so really, really been impressed. And uh, all the people, local people have been very welcoming, you know, bump into one or two lead supporters around and they're just, uh, yeah, really enthusiastic about the club and you just get a real feel for, for how big the club is and, and yeah. what a, a love and support that the, the, the fans have got for, for us, you know, it's, it's incredible. Really, really, really enjoying it. A lot of the clubs now invest heavily into the training ground. It's, it's where you spend the majority of your time. Yeah. Um, so um, clubs nowadays, you look all up and down the country, everyone's really heavily investing into the into the training ground setup as, as Leeds have here. We're going to try to move it on here again to, to lift it towards those even higher levels if we can poss- uh, possibly do that. But um, yeah, the, the training ground here is, is sufficient and, and pitches are excellent. Um, so yeah, it, it's, been, it's been very, very good. Uh, you've been down, you've seen the pitches. <laughs> They're like carpets, aren't they? Yeah. Not seeing yeah. any mud yet. So uh, here we are. It's top draw facilities. I mean, can't help but enjoy coming in there every day. The food's first class. It's like you're going to a restaurant every day. Talking about the manager, and you mentioned obviously that you've been at Norwich previously, so you guys were together yeah. there and uh, now reunited at Leeds. What's yeah. what's that been like coming back to work for the boss again? And and and, and I guess what's what's he like? What's the relationship yeah. between a between a goalkeeper coach and, and a manager? We just picked up from where we left off. Really, um, obviously spent four and a half years together at Norwich. Um, since that point manager and, and the staff they they went on to do one or two other bits uh, in germany and um, so yeah to be reunited with them w- was when i had the opportunity was was a no-brainer um, right. we get on you know closely um, so it, it was a real pleasure to be invited back into that group of staff um, in the sense of our relationship is very positive um, he allows me to get on with my work day to day have a, a firm interest within the goalkeepers which is great and an opinion um, what I say to the goalkeepers is, um, you know, you get some managers, as you know, who are perhaps goalkeeper haters. He, he, he certainly doesn't fit into that category. He's actually um, quite sympathetic towards us now and again. But um, as an opinion, without it being, uh, you know, uh, sort of, uh, what should I say? It, it's a balanced opinion on goalkeepers. He'll criticise when he feels it needs 
to be criticised, but as I say, he um, is sympathetic towards how difficult the position is and how important it is mm. for the team. I love it how you yeah. said there, some managers are goalkeeper here. As I remember, we oh. had you goalkeepers yeah. used to go off into a little paddock in the far corner of the field and just, yeah. you, you got the worst patch of ground yeah. ever. Compost corner. Yeah, exactly, Com- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Does your philosophy and your goalkeeping style have to like evolve around what he wants to play? And, and obviously, he loves to play out. So are you really yeah. integrating a lot of the sessions? Does he give you the go-ahead and the green light to get everybody together? How I would work day to day would be try to incorporate some of the philosophy and the strategy that we want to implement uh, from a goalkeeping side of things into the team when we work as a group, as a goalkeeping group. Um, so how we want to play out from the back, etc., yeah. and, and, and build up play and start uh, our possession off from the back. Yeah. Um, but in terms of when the goalkeepers when work with the group, obviously that's then down to the manager and, and the coaching staff yeah. to then implement how they want how they want their style of play to be evolved and the goalkeeper to play within that group. Um, so we're in constant conversation and we analyse together as a group of staff as to how we think, um, like, like anything, how anything can be developed and improved. Right. And obviously then it's down to myself to try to implement anything that we need to improve from the goalkeeping side of things to, to develop our play when I'm working with the goalkeepers. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a case of trying to ensure that um, we are working alongside what the manager wants and trying yeah. to implement the style of play, really. Back in the day, I played with Nigel Martin and Paul Robinson. Now, Paul Robinson had the longest boom I've ever seen. Yeah. So we yeah. used that as a massive outlet. We we never went through patterns of play. I remember playing out from the back, even though we had some quality players in Woodgate and Rio Ferdinand and, and mm. Lucas Wadebe, good good ball players. So we, we had a, a need, but I never remember us going through patterns of play back, back then, mm. you know. So obviously, have you ever worked under... I mean, you've been with Daniel before at Norwich. You've worked with him at Leeds. It's always been mm. playing out. When you've been coaching back in the day, have you had managers that would say, we're not playing out at all, mate. This is no oh, risk absolutely. football. We're going to just boom it. And change. Yeah, your, train, your training strategy completely changes then, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, <laughs> you know, obviously my roots were, were, were down in non-league and then um, yeah. I was coaching in, in, at, at Colchester United, <laughs> at a, a, lower, a lower league, obviously. So we weren't yeah. playing out from the back in, in those... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in those teams, that's for sure. Colchester was route pitch. one. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, the, the game slowly evolved in the last ten or fifteen years. Uh, you know, um, so without without doubt, it's it's so much more stressful for the goalkeeper now than it was yeah. ten, fifteen years ago. We just put the ball yeah. down and levered the ball down the pitch. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's certainly come on. What do you find that goalkeepers prefer? I mean, I imagine everyone's different, but do, do, do they enjoy being treated as almost like another centre half, or do they just want to get rid of it as quick as possible? No, I, I think <laughs> I know what I'd prefer to do. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> um, no, I, I think now all the goalkeepers are under of the understanding that they're going to be asked to, to play out from the back. Very few teams now would, would put the ball down and lever it down yeah. the pitch. Um, even when you look down into League One and League Two, a lot of teams now playing a great, great football. Look at Notts County and, and teams like that in League Two, what they're doing, yeah. um, just to name one. But uh, there's a few teams, well, more than a few teams, who are looking to, to build from the back. Um, so... Uh, I think they do enjoy it secretly. Uh, they like that responsibility. That, that that's Being what they have to do. They want to be part of the yeah. team uh, mm. and have an influence on the game. Um, so yeah, I think they do enjoy it. It comes with its own with its its own trouble at, at times where you're giving possession away perhaps cheaply, and obviously then you're defending and uh, give away corners, set plays, whatever it might be, and all of a sudden the team's under pressure from from a, uh, when you're trying to play out so it does come with its own challenges but I do think the goalkeepers secretly but, like it because otherwise yeah. you know you know you just apart from the team and you, and you want to be trying yeah. to impact the game as much as you can really those days of when goalkeepers have been separated uh, from the team uh, they're probably gone now I mean don't get me wrong as I've just said that we will work separately away from the group and try and implement mm. um the manager's style of play and work on that on our own. But then when once they're with the team, um, they're very much involved in the sessions and and trying to build from the back, constantly in possession and, and, and playing out. So, yeah, you you, uh, you know about it when you give the ball away, that's for sure, because it normally <laughs> ends up that you're, you're making a save at the very least. It, you know, 
on a bad right. day picking it out once or twice. So uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of pressure now. A lot of pressure. We we had uh, we had Ilan on the show a few weeks ago, and um, okay. yeah. Yeah. one of the one of the questions that we were chatting to him about was the the difference in last season and this season. Obviously, I mean, we can talk a little bit last about last season um, with Melly in a bit, but um, you know, he was you know copping a lot last year, a lot mm. of shots. A lot of goals, mm. etc. Mm. Whereas this year he's not had a huge amount to do. Um, right. But you know when he has been called on each game, you know he's yes. he's, he's been there. Um, and yeah. we were we we're talking about concentration, like you know what do you do to keep that concentration? Is there a special mm. training that you do? Is there a focus that you have to have so that when that moment comes up, you're ready for it? But I suppose being involved with playing out from the back does does that help in itself? Just keep yeah. keep the keeper switched on. Yeah, when you when you look back and analyse uh, the games, that you're right in saying that potentially Elan's not had a lot to do uh, this season from uh, from a shot saving perspective and, and, and protecting the goal. But when you look at what he's had to do in possession, he's more often than not involved throughout the game. So right. uh, that obviously benefits yourself in terms of concentration. Of course, those actions perhaps go a little bit unnoticed. That you know when he's just passing the ball to Pascal or Liam, whoever it yeah. might be. Um, they, you know, very simple actions. But what it does do is just that he's constantly involved in the game. So um, it's not like the ball's in the other half for, for 45 minutes and he doesn't touch right. it at all. Um, so he's having to stay completely focused to ensure that when he is called upon, uh, that he's, he's, he's ready to, to be at his best. Uh, and of course, when you're building up all of the time, that really helps you to stay focused. All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Essentially, I was a failed footballer, really, um, to be honest. I gave it a real good go. I was dedicated throughout throughout my young career. I, I, I loved it. I was training day in, day out, and I would have loved nothing more than to be a, to be a professional footballer, but probably didn't have... Uh, the psychological side of things probably let me down a little bit as I was coming through and uh, I probably recognised at a young age um, that it wasn't going to happen for me as a professional footballer. Um, what, what, would you, what do you mean by that, if, I, if you don't mind me asking, when you said know, the psychological I, side let you down? Yeah, I... Um, I Listen, I, I would still back myself to go into training today and, and have a good session and, and stand <laughs> up. You know, I, I, feel, I, I feel I could train well and... and uh, I, I wouldn't look out of place. I'd like to think, in my head. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, no, for sure. I, I, I technically, I, I was fine. I, um, you know, I would perform at the level required um, in training, and then perhaps come a match day, pressure of, of, of the of yeah. the game, and might get on right. top of me a little bit and make errors, yeah. etc. That you know you shouldn't make and you can't make. Yeah. Obviously, it can lead to goals in, in the position that we're in. So um, yeah, I, it just. You know, you sort of think oh, I'm finding this difficult. It wasn't. I didn't find it easy. Uh, that that side right. of things. Um, so that's that's really what got on top of me and held me back, um, without question. So, um, and I was aware of that probably at a relatively young age. So, then you. Uh, I love your honesty. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's no point uh, hiding away from it. And he said, I think it's important um, for everyone to. Or certainly for my side of things to recognize that because it is a psychologically challenging position um, and you have to be sympathetic sure. towards that um, so yeah I, I, as I was coming through as I say I felt I was technically good enough to, to uh, perform at a, a top level but as I say mentally I wasn't um, so then I got let go when I was probably what 16 17 something like that and in the back of my head as I'm going through um, right, what, what's the next part of my life looking like? Um, even even at 16 or 17, I will probably thought, right, I'll go straight into coaching, just seeing the obvious route, that if I couldn't play at the level I wanted to, I would pursue the, the coaching. Uh, Anybody coaching give you coaching. advice on that, or was that just you, Ed, coming up with that plan? Um, no, not really. Um, I think I was, I was lucky uh, when I was uh, at Colchester United, uh, um, it was a coach, Steve Downey, who, who then said, right, you're not going to be a player. <laughs> yeah. um, why don't you come along and um, and help with the kids? Um, simple really? as that, really. So right. um, I went down the non-league route and playing part-time football in, in the local non-league scene um, while I was coaching, coaching the youngsters. And listen, I was coaching in communities, uh, foundation, uh, where it was going. you were going into primary schools and you were coaching... 
uh, of an evening and uh, soon that developed where I was coaching at the, the Centre of Excellence at Coltus United whilst playing, um, whilst playing part-time football as well. So I was, I was constantly trying to improve my coaching with the, with the goal of, of one day getting a full-time job in, in coaching. Um, that materialised at Colchester through the ETPP scheme where, you know, obviously the academy system really took off and yeah. um, what was that, perhaps 2012 maybe, I think the ETPP uh, scheme came in, maybe, maybe earlier. Um, so the, yeah, the academy system really blew up then and, and people started to take it a little bit more seriously. So I managed to then get a full-time job working every day, coaching the under 18s and under 21s at, at Colchester United. Um, and you got the fire it, back in your belly from doing that? That gave you a good like mindset and you thought, this is what I want to do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you know, it was brilliant. Day in, day out, working full-time within football. Yeah. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. Um, throughout my throughout my life, really, to be honest, it's just you can't ask for a better environment to be in. You know, it, it's, it's great. Yeah. So uh, yeah, um, so soon as that came up, uh, to have the opportunity to work full time, um, that's obviously it was just dream come true sort of thing, really. Um, so yeah, that was the start that, point. Um, aspect that you mentioned about sort of being very self aware that y you you didn't quite have the, the psychological attributes yeah. to, to be a professional. That must have actually probably put you in really good stead as a coach. I imagine you were able to either A, recognise that in, in, in youngsters or B, nurture that, 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 yeah. that, that mental yeah, I like aspect, that. which, I, which I, I imagine goalkeepers, it's probably the most mentally taxing yeah. position they can be. Yeah, you'd like to think so. I mean, as I say, you're always trying to ensure that people are in a good place mentally. For sure, that's, yeah. that's one of the big things for me and my coaching is just making sure um, people are in a good place psychologically. Um, you know, there's everyone's got things going on off of the yeah. pitch. Um, the games are challenging. You, games are difficult. That you're going out there in, in, at Ellen Road and, and other major stadiums where the pressure's huge for the players. Um, and listen, I found the pressure difficult uh, as a kid playing in goal, uh, let alone right. what it's like for the boys playing, playing in yeah. front of 50, 60,000. So, yeah, for me, it's always about making sure the person is, is psychologically in a good place. That's the most yeah. important thing for me. And uh, yeah. everything else comes second to that. Is the person in a, in a good place? Uh, and from that point, we can start to work on everything else football wise is it is it hard to remind goalkeepers of the good stuff because uh, again with 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 Melier, we were chatting about no, they love it <laughs> no, but the thing the thing is with 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 a striker and we said this to him you know a striker misses six chances but scores one they're a hero goalkeeper makes six saves but lets one in at the end he's a villain and is it hard to keep reminding the goalkeeper look forget that just be, look at the, the great saves you made before that happened yeah that's it I mean there's a lot of other positive actions that uh, that the goalkeepers will be making through the game other than a save obviously yeah. for the supporters and perhaps the wider world, um, you know, when you're watching match of the day, they're not going to watch uh, the goalkeeper passing it out from the back. And right, right. Coming pass. to claim the ball. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that doesn't make the highlights real, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, obviously, when you uh, when you can see the goal, you're going to analyse it and, and speak about things that you can do better. But equally, you'll look at the positive things that the goalkeeper will do as well. And, and a lot right. of that will be, um, as you say, coming to claim crosses, um, dealing with balls in behind, trying to sweep up from behind your back four, um, distributing the ball from the back, which is, is clearly a huge, huge aspect of our game. Um, so it's really important that we are um, balancing, balancing out what we're analysing and ensuring that we just keep on that level playing field. Because if, you, if you're only concentrating on the goals that you can see, it's a, <laughs> right. it's a, very, it's a very horrible world. Yeah, home, you know? I, I uh, imagine it's so. hard work. How have you found the, the relationship and the rivalry between, um, obviously, the, the current crop of goalkeepers that we have? Because you've got Dollar with experience, Melia that's got experience in numbers and minutes at such a young age, so the competition must be fierce, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, as I say, it's a very healthy group that we've got. We've got the top three, Elan, Carl and obviously Christopher Clarsen. And then below that, we've got Harry Christie and Danny van der Hooven who are, who are pushing day in, day out as well. Um, 
in regards to Carl, Carl works extremely hard every day to, to ensure that he is pushing Ilan to, to be in the team. Um, yeah. But what we've got here, we've got a situation where Carl understands that whilst Ilan is playing well, um, obviously all he can do is work hard to be ready for a scenario where, where Ilan isn't available or obviously Ilan falls out of form. Um, but equally, Carl is, you know, he's a astute guy. He's not going to be knocking yeah. on the manager's door after a poor, poor game. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, it's very healthy in that respect. Goalkeepers are generally um, quite respectful to one another as well. But yeah, obviously they're understanding that mistakes can happen and, and obviously they're waiting for an opportunity to come into the team. So Carl's in that boat at the moment and without question has been invaluable for our group um, to be pushing pushing the goalkeepers and, and set standards. So, yeah, delighted with him at the moment, I have to say. Leeds has got a great tradition of bringing the goalies through. I mean, I used to love watching the Leeds goalies back in the day. Um, you know, Nigel Martin, Paul Robinson's, etc. Yeah, but England's number one, Nigel, was. Stuff yeah. seen, Nigel. Oh, England's number one. Unreal. What a goalie. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. <laughs>